Hello, this is Overlord Bo, back with another information video, and today we'll be looking over the top seven unobtainable ships in World of Warships. Now, the ships that are going to be included in this list are ships that are no longer able to be purchased directly in port or on the website, and it will help today will be with SAT score. So let's hop right into it. So the first ship, of course, is going to be the Julius Caesar, and I'll let SAT score talk about that ship a little bit. Uh, Julius Cesare was one of the earliest uh, Perineums war game released, and she is a complete utter monster at tier 5. If you if someone takes out the uh, Julio, you know he is a seal clubber, because that thing is stupidly accurate, relatively tanky. Uh, both traits are not commonly seen in a tier 5 ship. And of course, since tier 5 cruisers are very easy to citadel and obliterate, you can see why Julio is a terror at that tier. Yeah, this thing is a Omaha's nightmare. If you if an Omaha is broadside of this thing, there's a 99.99% chance that you're going to get dev struck by the, the uh, Caesar. So definitely a very painful ship to uh, come across. Definitely one of the most unattainable ships in World of Warships. Uh, very hard to get. Only available from the Santa containers. I don't think they've ever had an auction for it, but they'll definitely probably do one in the future. They've been doing a lot of auction with these things, so let's move on to the next ship. So the next ship is going to be the Kamikaze Sisters, the Kamikaze R, and the Kamikaze. Uh, these and things also are, includes uh, Fujin. Yeah, it also includes the Fujin as well. So the Kamikaze Sisters. So, you want to talk about the Kamikaze sisters a little bit? So, the Kamikaze actually was the pre-nerfed version of the Minikaze. And all four ships, one uh, at the same time, had 7km torpedoes and 54 concealment. They were extremely difficult to spot. Their gunpowder was surprisingly comparable to the other Tier 5 ships. And more importantly... Their torpedoes were, well, short-ranged. They had relatively fast speed, and they can spam it about every 45, 50 seconds. So it was a nightmare for destroyers to fight because it would outspot everything. It was a nightmare for battleships because Lamal torpedoes, uh, tor torpedo spam, and cruisers because Lamal torpedo spam. How are you going to dodge all of that? So thankfully, Wargaming did eventually remove the kamikazes from sale yeah i remember these i remember back when i played a lot of tier fives you could tell a seal cobra from a mile away by being in one of these ships also in recent tourneys as well where tier five ships are allowed we've also seen a lot of tourneys to this day still use their uh, kamikaze as one of their dds uh, to this day just because of how powerful well, it is. Whenever it's allowed, of course. Because yes. I remember the last Clash of the Classes uh, specifically banned Julio and Kamikaze. Yep. Yeah, they are definitely monsters for sure. Now, the next ship we'll be going to look at is going to be the Tier 7 Hiata. And then we'll be looking at the Belfast as well. So SAT is where I'll let you talk about them as I try to find it. I got to remember where it's at. Oh, never mind. I found it. Okay, you're good. So Haida was the first Commonwealth ship, I believe. Or no, she was the second after Perth. Yep. And Haida is essentially a tier 7 destroyer that's cosplaying as a tier 8. She is one of the rare destroyers that can get down to about 5.8 concealment, which is competitive with other tier 8s and tier 9s. And unlike the other tech tree ship, the Shirasuyu, she has very good speed, good gun power, uh, fuel smoke, which lets her move while in smoke, and a self-defense hydro. So she has really good gun power. What it basically uh, gives her a very good package to fight against other destroyers and support the team if necessary. Just overall, just ridiculously strong for a tier 7 ship. And she is one of the more common. She's one of the best destroyers at uh, tier, tier 6 to tier 7 ranked whenever it comes by. Oh yeah, 100% for that one. I Whenever there's tier 7 ranked, I 
if I just decide to pick a destroyer, I always pick Hiata. It's just a strong, uh, strong DD with the exot with the uh, short. What's the smoke called? It's um. Pure, uh, the it crawling is called, smoke. Yeah, the, crawl the, smoke. Uh, yeah, the crawl with the crawling smoke, the defense hydro, and its engine boost, along with the amazing guns, maneuverability, and concealment. It makes it a top competitor for ranked. Now, moving on, the other tier 7 ship we're going to talk about is going to be the Belfast. I'll let SAT uh, score cover that one as well. Belfast is the other uh, super old perineum. Uh, def I think of all the perineums, it's one of the oldest. Only Kamikaze and Julio are older than her, I believe. So, the reason why Belfast uh, earns this distinction is because she has... Few, she has both smoke, British smoke, my add, and radar. And unusually for a tier 7 cruiser, she gets the tier 5 concealment slot. So she is a night. Basically, she's a nightmare for destroyers to fight because they can't spot her safely without getting radared. And when she's not bullying destroyers, Belfast can farm other ships in the safety of smoke in a tier where radar is super rare. She does have a few weaknesses, like not, health, not having torpedoes and uh, having a vulnerable citadel. But played properly, these are not really these are really hard to exploit for the enemy. Meanwhile, Belfast just sits in smoke and farms everything. You don't see her uh, if you see her in ranked, like she is a menace. You just don't see her in random so often because she doesn't up tier quite as well and. People just don't like getting up tiered in general, especially in a tier seven ship. Yeah, tier sevens is one of the most painful tiers to be up tiered. Like, just imagine you're in like a tier seven battleship like Colorado, and you're fighting like a tier nine battleship like an Izumo or a Masashi or anything like that. Yeah, you're not gonna have a fun time, not at all. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next ship we're talking about is going to be the Lenin, the legendary Russian bias battleship. Uh, herself. Now, the Lenin itself is just a monster. It is incredibly tanky, amazingly accurate guns. It just spews Stalin idiom at the enemies. And since it's also made of Stalinium, it really just does not take that much damage at all. Uh, this thing could practically be a tier 9 ship with how it is, but it's tier 8. So in, so in tier 8 ranked, this thing is an absolute monster. Even in tier 8 clan battles, the Lenin is a very popular pick just due to how tanky of a ship it is. You can buy it with Knetsov, and it becomes a monster really hard to destroy. Um, the only main weakness is on this ship is the anti-air, even though it is still decent. And of course, it's uh, ASW. Uh, against submarines, but other than that, this thing is still a monster. One of the most sought-after ships in the game, just for its pure, just devastating power. Like, the guns are... The guns follow the same Russian ballistics, correct, SAT? Where the closer they are, the more accurate it is? Uh, let me double-check, actually. Uh, the, main, the special thing about Lenin is actually her uh, turret arrangement. She gets all three in the front, and they can rotate from side to side very easily, which puts her a class above her tech tree counterpart, the uh, Vladivostok. As for the dispersion, it is the actually the exact same as the uh, Vlad. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Scales, uh, scales better at closer range, but gets worse at longer. Yep, so that is the Lenin. Now let's move on to the tier, to the two tier nines. Uh, the first one we talk about is going to be the Musashi, and I'll let SAT score cover this one since he has more experience with the Musashi. Musashi, uh, she doesn't do anything special, but the reason why she's on this list is because... Wargaming took the Yamato, decided to make her a tier 9, and decided the only nerf she needed was just a uh, accuracy nerf. That's literally it. She still has a tier 10 hull. Her AA, while 
basically non-existent, doesn't matter anyways, because Yamato didn't have much uh, AA to, to start with. And you put her at tier 9. So even though the guns are less reliable, Musashi just absolutely... Like, she just can use her absurd bulk to uh, stay in places that many other tier 9s could not do. And she gets the uh, 432mm uh, overmatch, so any battleship she fights, if she if they're Bowen, Musashi says, Lamau, no. So, while she doesn't do, she doesn't have any, like, special gimmicks, aside from the 32mm overmatch, but just the fact that she literally has the same durability as Yamato, and very similar guns just puts her in this uh, absurdly OP category. Yeah, when I first started playing the game and I, and I was like playing in tier 7 battleships and I would see a Masashi, oh, what is that thing? And then I would just sit by and just get absolutely decimated. It was pretty much a horror show back when I was first starting to play this game. And this thing engraved a scar of pain whenever I saw the ship. So, And whenever I see a Masashi nowadays, I just want to imbue nothing but pain and misery upon it. But yeah, that's so fine. then, so then, how about the Georgia? Why does she make the list? Yeah, the Georgia is the speed demon of the tier nine uh, battleships. When we say that this thing can run down destroyers, um, yeah, it can run down destroyers. It is in. It was one of the earliest, quickest, uh, fastest battleships in the game with its speed boost, and you could also build this thing with amazing secondaries which a lot of people would do to run down destroyers that would sit in smoke. And the, the fact that this thing can go, what was its top speed with the engine boost? It's like 40. 40. Yeah, 40 knots. 40 knots. It, it would make it where a lot of DDs couldn't get away when it was it just run up on them and it would just run them down. I have so many horror stories of Georgia's like rushing me down or me rushing down people in my Georgia. It's just hilarious because you're just like, oh, there's like, you don't realize what the battleship is. I was like, oh, it's, there's no way it can catch me. And then you just see its engine boost pop and you're like, oh, shit. And you're just like trying to run for your life as it just runs you down. Yeah, good times, good times. On top of her amazing speed, she also gets respectable guns, 457s that will overmatch 30 millimeters of armor. Her secondaries were already mentioned, and her hull is not too bad for a ship. She gets the imp she gets the uh, quick repair party, which means she gets 40 seconds cooldown instead of the standard 80. So not only is she speedy, but she's surprisingly durable with hard hitting guns. Essentially, she has too much of every she has too much of everything, and that's why she makes a list. And War Game have removed her from sale. Yep. Yep. Now, the final two ships on the list for this top seven, and the last ship we talk about is going to be the, uh, um, so the, the first ship is going to Under. be, yeah, is, um, what was the word again? My apologies. Honorary. Yeah, honorary mentions. So the first ship is going to be in the list, and then the honorary mention will be after. Uh, the Smallland is definitely one of the top unobtainable ships in WoWs. Uh, it's when it first was introduced to the game, uh, it's uh, engine boost along with the amazing guns, it's torpedoes, uh, a radar. It was the first, was it the first DD with it was the first radar D that had strong guns, torps. It was just all around such a superior DD at the time that the small end yep. overtook clan battles instantly. And I remember back when I was playing a lot of clan battles, my whole job was playing Smallland. That's all I did. Practicing Smallland all day, practicing Smallland all night, playing the ship over and over and over and over and over and over. It, it was meta so fast, and it stayed meta for so long. Uh, nowadays, it isn't as meta anymore, but that's mostly due to the cruisers that are running around. Uh, back then, there was a lot of different cruisers, but nowadays, normally, if you want to run a small end, you would just take a Gdansk instead uh, with that radar. The quick action radar with the Gdansk is really good. 
Um, makes it where it's up for like 10 or 12 seconds, but it's long enough to keep a DD spotted if you have a Mosfa. So you do a Gdansk and Mosfa pairing uh, on a cap to make sure no one can get the cap. But to still this day, the small one is just a is just an absolute monster. And I'll let SAT talk about it a little bit. Yeah. As Bo said, uh, ever since release, Smallin has been a staple of many competitive teams. It's like not even it's like not even a uh, contest. But like she instantly invalidated almost every other destroyer overnight. Anything that was not a French or a uh, Russian ship at that point. She only fell off because the meta changed uh in where like you don't really go for cap contests anymore, but instead you try to uh you try to pressure ships out of it and then take the cap when it's safe. But that's a topic for a different time. Yeah, exactly. Even in ranked and randoms, uh Smallin is still very powerful. In fact, in random, she's probably the most try-hard destroyer you can take because she absolutely destroys any other standard destroyer. Like with how popular the uh, the uh, Shimakaze is, Small just beats the crap out of her, no problem. And then you can use that to spot your teammates. You can just go against the battleships for free damage. Do whatever you feel like. And of course, she earns. Her, uh, she's a easy pick for a tryhard division because of her anti-destroy capability. Yep, the uh, special engine boost that gives it a thirty percent uh, speed boost along with the better acceleration makes it where this thing can legit just dodge. Like it's like the Matrix level of dodging shells with how much it improves the acceleration. It gets a heal, a radar, has amazing anti-air, which is unheard of for tier 10 dds um and it has um forward facing depth charges which are a little bit beamy but the main thing is it has amazing concealment uh great amazing guns good survivability all around is just a very legit one of the top um op broken ships and wows i'm surprised it never got nerfed but yeah she does she doesn't get smoke so you do have to be careful when you open up but for experienced players that's not really a problem you just dodge everything yep so the now, final mention for today is my most op ship where i consider it the most op ship in randoms the thunderer um overnight when the Thunderer was introduced, it changed the whole meta uh, for randoms. Overnight, this thing changed the whole meta. Pretty much a ship will have a weakness of the nation, like for guns, for instance. And back then, the weakness of the British were it had strong HE, but weak AP. This thing just threw that out the window. And it had strong HE and AP. So you it could sit at 20-something kilometers and just dev strike cruisers or just smash battleships with the AP. Or it could just use its over 65% fire chance to set fires the whole time. 65%. That's like a guaranteed fire. If you didn't get fires, that's when you know you were screwed. Like, RNG was just not in your favor. 65% fire chance is just insane. The only weakness of this ship is its British armor, which is strong at distance, but up close, it's going to get absolutely destroyed. So you have to play this ship at distance. But other than that, this ship is definitely one of the easiest ships to play in WoWs. One of the easiest. And I'll let SAT say his part on the ship. Yeah, it was such a ridiculous gun platform that people just spammed her. It only, uh, it only, t it took the wargaming to nerf her range and in order to kind of get her under control. And it was crazy about how men, how much backlash people were giving it to such an overpowered ship. But I guess it did the job since you don't see thunder as quite as much anymore. Which is sad, because Thunder is still an amazing gun platform. 
And good players know that you don't take range anyways, because if you were taking range, that means you were sitting too far back. If you ju you just uh, hit get closer, you hit the enemy uh, cruisers with your AP shells or HE sh or battleship with your HE shells, and they all die. Easy. Of course, uh, the reason why I don't put th I put the small and over to Thunder is because while Thunder is really overpowered for a battleship, she does have some weaknesses, and she doesn't quite fare well outside the randoms category. If you put her into ranked, she has to get closer because there's just less ships uh, around to shoot at, in which enemies can easily exploit her poor armor weaknesses. And then that's the same reason you don't see her in clan battles. Her armor is just not good enough to uh, tank enemy fire. Yeah, we also have to remember that this ship was around back when they were testing the dead eye skill where if you were sitting outside of, I think it was 15 kilometers, you got a better accuracy for the guns. Um, so this ship was already accurate, and then it got the dead eye accuracy. And the dead eye, the dead eye skill didn't last very long. Uh, it died pretty quickly. Mm hmm but Thunder remains overpowered, so War came, he just said, fine, we're not going to sell it again. Yep, so that is the video for the top seven unobtainable ships in WoWs. If you guys have any questions or concerns or want to put in your own top uh, unobtainable ships, uh, let us know down in the comments, and we'll talk to you all later.